Hey everyone, Glitch here and welcome back to Hack 5. In our last video, we made this little one cell pack. Today, we're going to be continuing making batteries, but this time we're going to be building a drone pack. Well, not specifically a drone pack, but a pack to run my FPV goggles. These are the DJI FPV goggles, they're awesome. And this is a battery for this little guy. It uses the same 18650 cells we are using, except higher capacity versions to get up to 30 minutes of flight time. Darren and I have been loving flying these drones, and if you want to see a shootout video with them, make sure to check the links down in the description below where we were flying them out in the desert. Great fun. Anyway, back on the subject of batteries, I had been using a little 3S LiPo pack, 850 milliamp hour, something like that, to run my goggles, and it died so quickly. So in this video, I want to build a 18650 pack that is 4S with like 3,500 milliamp hours and use that to run my goggles. I should get a good long runtime out of the goggles and shouldn't have to switch my battery for a day of flying, which is exactly what I want. So let's get started. For this pack is more involved, which also comes with more risk. Anytime you are adding complexity in multiple cells, there's a much higher risk of shorting out if you do something wrong or place a tabbing wire incorrectly. So if you have any questions or doubts, make sure to leave a comment down below and I can expand on that info. The last thing I want is for any of you to start a house fire. That said, follow this video at your own risk. Uh, batteries can be very dangerous, but they can also be very useful if you master them. So let's get started. First things first, I modified my spot welder. I was tired of using the probes like chopsticks or needing an, a third hand or something. So I 3D printed this little bracket, which I have the files linked for down in the description. And it just holds the probes on with zip ties, keeps the tips at the perfect distance. And yeah, there you go. So now you have one easy to use probe. This little spot welder is great. It automatically detects when both probes are touching the workpiece and applies power after a short delay. You don't need a foot switch or anything like that. That said, I'm concerned that if you were to touch the two probes together, something bad might happen without the nickel piece, nickel strip in between. So that is another reason I made this little mod. First things first, you wanna arrange your cells in the form factor you want. For this pack, I'm making a two by two array. You can also do this as a flat four pack if that fits your needs better. The spot weld connections change somewhat, so make sure you look into how that's supposed to be done. I will not be doing every little form factor you could possibly do with 18650 cells or this video series would be 100 videos long. We're gonna do the simple tabs first. It is just two strips laid horizontally parallel to each other and this makes two 2S packs effectively. Once you're done with that, you flip the pack over 180 degrees. Don't rotate it, flip it over 180 degrees. This helps you keep the orientation so that you don't accidentally short out the packs. If you were to put a spot weld tab the exact same direction on the other end of the cells, you would have a very bad time. You've now created a dead short with 7.4 volts and a very high current. Don't do that. Again, if you aren't sure, triple check everything. So our next tab is going to go vertically. This is our 4S connection. This officially makes it a 4S pack. And then we're gonna have two tabs coming off the right side. That is going to give us our place to solder the XT60 connector. Those tabs get folded over and secured with tape. Again, like I said in the last video, make sure to insulate anywhere you have tabs touching the side of the battery. Any kind of uh, vibration or pressure could potentially push the tab through the relatively thin heat shrink on the cell and cause a dead short. Now here comes the fun part. Wiring the balance lead is always a bit tricky. And again, triple check everything. You're dealing with a live power system here. We're going to put the two very ends of the connector to the negative and positive. And then after that, the three wires in between will go to each of the three junction points on the batteries in order from negative to positive. Now, if that didn't make a lot of sense, there are a lot of diagrams out there. Before plugging this balance lead into anything, a charger or anything like that, take a voltmeter and probe each individual terminal from negative to positive so that you're going up in 4.2 volt increments or roughly 4.2 volts, depending on the state of the charge of the battery. So you see 4.2, 8.4, 12.8, 12.8, 13.8, and math and there you go you've effectively made a 4s pack now like i said insulate 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 it is always safer to insulate more than necessary so do that now we will connect it to our charger i'm using an isdt pd60 this is a great little USB-C charger uh, i love it i don't own any other drone chargers that's what i use to charge all my lithium pack that plugs right in and you just hit go and you've charged your battery 
And that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, I, I cannot stress that you be cautious and triple check everything enough. I've had a couple of bad accidents. Uh, thankfully, I didn't start any fires and I caught it before I spot welded the tab in place or did anything permanent and they didn't lead to thermal runaway, but batteries can absolutely start fires. So make sure you're working in a well-ventilated workspace. You have a bucket of sand nearby to dump the cell into. Uh, fire extinguishers to works. Anyway, that about does it. In our next video, we'll be covering BMSs or battery management systems. And these are things that will do all the balancing that balance charger and balance lead does for us internally. So all you have to do is apply a constant current and constant voltage and you can charge it. You could even make your own USB-C charged battery, which is exactly what I wanna do with this pack in our next video so that I can charge it separately and always have a good goggle battery while my drones are charging. Thank you all for watching. I've been Glitch. This has been Hack5. Glitch out. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and pen test products at hack5.org. 2468 1632 64 128 256 512 1024 2050 no 2048 4096 anyway